And now we'll do the roughing cut. So let's go to tool paths. This time we'll use the regular roughing tool path instead of the quick rough tool path. So we'll select rough. Chain manager comes up. We're doing a partial chain. Now I want to make sure I pick it from the beginning of that chamfer. And I'm just rolling the wheel on my mouse back and forth to zoom in and zoom out. And the last entity is going to be this one that comes up to the shoulder. And we'll OK that. I'm going to use the same tool and we'll add a comment. And I'll just say rough turn the part. Now for our roughing parameters, we're just going to go with the default depth of cut. Uh, we do want them to overlap between cuts. We're going to leave ten thousandths in X and Z. Most of this looks pretty good. We're going to go with the defaults and say OK. Now even though this has a little undercut in here, it doesn't mean anything. It's still not going to try and get inside there. You'll notice if we zoom in, it just goes straight across. It's not trying to dip in there. But now we're going to take the finish cut. We'll go right into the finish cut and we'll say tool pass finish. And for my chain, I'll just select this button here to pick the last chain. That way I don't have to re-pick the entire profile. And we'll OK that. For this, I'm going to slide down and grab this tool. It's uh, tool number 21. It's a 156 nose radius. If we double click on that, it tells us it's a VNMG 431. So it's a 35 degree diamond type insert. OK, that, and we'll add a comment. And we'll just say finish the profile. And for our parameters, we're just going to do a single finish cut and we're going to cut it to a zero stock size and we're going to say OK. So even that, now that tool probably could have fit in here at least a little bit, but it didn't even try. And that's because if we go in and look at the parameters for that, there are plunge parameters down here. And these are what control whether or not it even tries to get into these undercuts. So because this was selected, it's avoiding any undercuts on the face or on the diameter. So no plunging is allowed with this particular selection. So that's why it didn't try and cut for the undercut. Now if we do want to get in there to cut that, we can go to tool pass, we're going to do another finishing routine and this time I'm only going to pick this small section here for my chain. I'm going to use the same tool and I'm going to go into my finish parameters. The first thing I'm going to do is tell it that it's okay to plunge. So I'll select my plunge parameters and I'm going to tell it it's okay to plunge in on the diameter. Although I could pick this one. There are no faces for it to plunge in on, but this is all we really need. And we're going to okay that. So that will allow it to plunge. And now we're going to tell it how we want to take these cuts. And I'm going to tell it I want to take 30 thousandths per cut, and I want to take four cuts. Now the other thing we want to look at for something like this is my lead in and lead out. The default lead in is pointing to the 9 o'clock position, meaning from this starting corner, it's going to want to lead in this way. What I want it to do is lead in this way. Now, if you want to go to a different mark other than 90 or 45, you need to change the increment here. But we're going to lead in at 45. That'll be good for the lead in. And for the lead out, I'm going to have it lead straight out. Let's OK that. OK here. And it looks like the first cut really didn't cut very much. It didn't cut anything. So we'll go back into those parameters. And I'm going to change this to three cuts. And we'll regenerate that. 